If you're looking for a premium badged compact executive estate and like the idea of an all-wheel drive Audi A4 Avant with extra road presence and enhanced ability and slippery conditions, then the German brand's second generation A4 all-road model could well appeal. It'll also suit those who appreciate the virtues of a plush, mid-sized premium SUV, but don't really like the thought of being seen in one. There are certainly more affordable and more capable suv oriented estates in this segment, but there are a few more desirable ones. Buying an SUV always smacks of using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. It's fair enough to want your family car to be able to tackle snowy roads, uh, muddy car parks and icy February country back doubles, but is it really necessary to buy something capable of crossing the Serengeti to do that? Of course, most modern 4x4s would get stuck fairly early on in your average desert, but they still carry far more technology than is strictly required to cope with such modest expectations which is why a car like this one, Audi's second generation A4 all-road, would seem to make a lot more sense. Now, Audi's all-road concept is pretty straightforward. Take one of their standard Quattro all-wheel drive Avant estates, uh, then give it a bit of extra ride height and some body cladding to protect the bodywork, or more likely to remind the neighbours what you've bought. That and a few electronic tweaks are enough to make the car suitable for mild off-road use. And we're not talking about rock-strewn mountain sides or extreme wilderness river crossings here, but the kind of unmade roads and muddy tracks that owners might encounter and which might damage an unmodified vehicle. Now, Audi has been perfecting the concept since the turn of the century, initially with a large A6 all-road model that took on large executive sector off-road estates like uh, Volvo's XC70. Clever height-adjustable air suspension always made that A6 surprisingly able on the rough stuff, but this slightly more compact A4 all-road model doesn't really need that in the wider, slightly more affordable sector of the market where it sits. Here, it's a plusher alternative to tough all-wheel driver states like Subaru's Forester and Volkswagen's Passat Alltrack, and it has been since the original A4 all-road model was launched back in 2009. Over 100,000 examples of that car were sold, a number large enough to prompt Audi into taking a bit more trouble with its second generation version, launched in mid-2016. Now, there's still no air suspension or any sort of real wilderness capability, but a few key changes do allow this car to meet its limited remit a little more capably. For example, there's more suspension travel and an off-road mode you can activate in the Drive Select system that focuses the electronics for off-piste use. Perhaps more significantly, this car gets a completely new on-demand Quattro with Ultra technology four-wheel drive system that's significantly more efficient than the old permanently activated setup. Plus, on top of that, you've also got all the impressive technology of the fifth generation A4 Avant model that this all-road variant is based on. That car granting this one lighter weight, a classier cabin and high-tech media connectivity. So it all sounds quite promising, doesn't it? Is it promising enough, though, to make this a better alternative to that premium-badged mid-sized SUV you might have been thinking about? Let's find out. You'll probably be expecting this A4 all-road to be just like any normal A4 Avant Quattro model to drive, and of course, to a great extent it is, but there are changes, important changes. The main things you need to know about concern ride height and suspension travel, this variant sitting 34 millimeters higher from the ground than an ordinary A4 Avant. That's not enough to give you the kind of commanding driving position you get in a fully-fledged SUV, but it does make quite a difference in other ways. Primarily, the extra ride height's there to allow for 23 millimetres of extra suspension travel, which means that off-road, unmade tracks with large bumps can be taken more easily in this Audi stride. You wouldn't want to attempt anything more challenging than that in this car, though. After all, there's still only 166 millimetres of ground clearance, which is actually 14 millimetres less than the previous generation model could offer. The lack of the kind of adaptable air suspension you'd find on the larger A6 all-road model means that gnarlier surfaces could easily damage the underside of the car, although Audi has fitted extra underbody protection to try and shield the more vulnerable areas. 
on the kind of normal paved surface where this car is actually going to spend 99.9% .9 of its time, that extra ride height and additional suspension travel has an effect. Of course, there's certainly a touch more body roll in tighter bends than you get in an ordinary A4 event. We think, though, that many buyers might actually quite like that slightly softer feel. Arguably, it's created in this model one of the best riding compact estates that you can buy. Now, we were talking about changes. Uh, you'll find another if you check out the options on the standard Drive Select Driving Dynamic System, one of those setups that allows you to vary steering feel, throttle response, and stability thresholds to suit the way you want to drive. Uh, gear shift timings are altered too, thanks to the fact that all A4 all road models come only with automatic transmission. Um, as well as the usual comfort, uh, dynamic, efficiency, auto and individual drive select modes, there's also here an extra off-road setting that focuses all the electronic systems for off-road use and keeps the car permanently in four-wheel drive. Now that fact is actually quite pertinent because one of the main things you need to know about this A4 All-Road's new Quattro with Ultra Technology four-wheel drive system is that normally it isn't always powering all four wheels. Now that is quite a revolutionary concept for the Ingolstadt brand. Prior to the launch of this model, Audi Quattro four-wheel drive had to be a permanent system that always kept continual traction to all four wheels. That's great for peace of mind, but bad for running cost efficiency. Here, though, all A4 all-road variants have been given a much more sophisticated version of the kind of on-demand four-wheel drive setup that most other brands use. As you'd expect, it's reactive in the way that all such systems are. In other words, drive to all four wheels cuts in when required by a loss of traction. The difference with Audi's Quattro with Ultra technology system, though, is that it can also be predictive. Uh, sensors around the car allow the Ultra system to read your driving style. So, for example, if you're throwing the car around like a lunatic in the Drive Select System's sporty dynamic setting, uh, then the system will engage four-wheel drive sooner and for longer. In contrast, if you're cruising along uh, with Drive Select setting comfort, the Quattro package is less likely to unnecessarily come into play than it would be with a less intelligent on-demand system. Earlier we were talking about suspension. Now in a normal A4 you get a whole menu of rather complicated choices in that regard, but here it's much simpler. As standard this car comes with the conventional A4's ordinary comfort dynamic setup. If funds permitted though, we'd want to look at the extra cost adaptive damping option, which for all road buyers is called all road suspension with damping control. This works through the various settings of the Drive Select system and adapts itself to the road you're on and the mood you're in, which is nice to have because there will probably be instances where you simply don't want the soft feel of the standard setup. And at those times, it'd be nice to be able to click the car into dynamic and feel everything firm up a little. We'd be less interested in stumping up more cash for the optional dynamic steering system, which varies the feedback you get to suit the speed you're doing. Now, for us, that feels rather too artificial, which is a pity, because it would be nice to be able to do something about the rather vague steering response that continues to characterise most A4 variants, including this one. Work around this, though, and it's possible to drive this car very quickly through a set of bends should you want to. It's beautifully balanced with superb traction, aided by a torque vectoring system that's able to transfer power to the front wheel that can best use it in hard cornering. In fact, there are all the ingredients you need to complement the rejuvenated range of willing direct injection turbocharged Euro 6 engines that are offered in this car. Now, unusually, given that its European sales are massively dominated by diesel power, most of Audi's recent underbonnet development seems to have centred around petrol engines, and a four all-road buyers get one of the best of them a 190 PS 2 litre TFSI power plant that combines efficiency and power into a surprisingly likeable package. Now this is down to revolutionary combustion technology that at low speeds limits the amount of fuel and air entering the engine, but uh, can instantaneously restore full acceleration with the prod of your right foot, dispatching the 62 miles an hour sprint in 6.1 seconds en route to 153 miles an hour as you slur effortlessly through the seven ratios of the standard S Electronic Auto gearbox. Most A4 all-road buyers, though, will give this petrol variant no more than a passing glance on their way to sign up for one of the diesel models. 
more than 60% likely to opt for the 2 litre TDI offered here only in 190 PS S Tronic guys. That unit has a useful 400 Newton meters of pulling power and makes 62 miles an hour in 7.8 seconds on the way to 136 miles an hour. If you want to go faster, then for only a little more, there's a 218 PS version of the brand's 3 litre V6 TDI unit that improves those figures to 6.6 .6 seconds and 143 miles an hour. And finally, at the top of the A4 all-road range, there's the variant we're trying here, the 3-litre V6 TDI with 272 PS, a derivative which makes 62 miles an hour in 5.5 seconds and has to be artificially restrained at 155 miles an hour. Uh, more importantly, there's so much torque, 600 Newton meters, that Audi's had to fit an uprated 8-speed Tiptronic Auto gearbox to cope with it. Not surprisingly, this derivative offers the biggest brake trailer towing capacity, 1,900 kilos. Uh, with the other two diesels, that figure falls to 1,800 kilos. You can see why such a significant proportion of A4 Avant buyers opt to find the relatively small premium necessary to upgrade themselves into an A4 all-road model. Obviously, isn't the go off-road. Audi reckons that hardly any of them will ever do that. Instead, the allure has much to do with image. The aesthetic changes made to create this all-road body style may be subtle, but they're undeniably effective in giving this car a little more street-side presence. At the front, a lower bumper section finished in selenite silver aims to offer a touch of SUV-ness, but the primary all-road defining touch is provided by this much more imposing single-frame front grille, which uses vertical chromed louvers rather than the usual horizontal ones. This features chromed trapezoidal frame extends out towards sculpted headlights that border the monnet and can as here be ordered optionally with Audi's intelligent matrix LED technology, recognisable by its bright white crystal shine. Here, each headlamp unit divides its high beam into 15 individual light emitting diodes that are activated or dimmed in 64 stages based on traffic and road condition information gathered by an integrated camera. In profile, the first things you'll probably notice are the black wheel arch extensions that mark out this all-road model, showcasing the higher ride height while hinting at the underbody protection. Other key changes over the standard A4 Avant include this wider aluminium side sill with more aluminium used to trim the roof rails, the door handles and the window line. There's also a standard high gloss package that adds a smarter touch to these dark B and C pillars. Plus, of course, the alloy wheels are bespoke. There's a choice of rims that are either 17, 18 or 19 inches in size. Here at the back, there's another bespoke bumper, the rear diffuser featuring that selenite silver finish we saw at the front. Otherwise, it's much as you would find on an ordinary A4 Avant. So you get this sharp-edged upper crease sitting above tail lights that feature a multifaceted 3D design. They're illuminated on upper spec variants like this one by no fewer than 48 LEDs that create a distinctive nighttime signature. Like all of Audi's Avant Estate models, this one gets a standard electrically operated rear hatch and you can make this powered system more user-friendly by optionally adding in one of those electrically operable tailgates that can be activated by a waft of your foot beneath the bumper if you're approaching the car laden down with shopping. The raising the tailgate reveals that this Mark II A4 all-road model's extra 25 millimetres of length has freed up 15 litres more boot space than before, the total now rising to 505 litres. Now that figure still leaves this Audi some way short of potential rivals like Volkswagen's Passat Alltrack and uh, Subaru's Forester, but it is significantly more than you get from other class competitors like Volvo's V60 Cross Country and Peugeot's 508 RXH. A4 all-road buyers needing more space will value the versatility of a 40-20-40 split-folding rear backrest, the centre part of which is very useful if you need to carry longer items like skis. Flattening the seat reveals up to 1,510 litres of space, plus there are the usual optional rail systems and load organisers. Now, there's no additional carriage capacity beneath the boot floor, but that is because, rather refreshingly, Audi provides you with a spare wheel rather than one of those irritating tyre inflation kits. Time to move inside. Now, the exterior of this car may have been subtly adorned with rugged styling cues, but there are a few of those to be found in here. 
Instead, there's lots of vulnerable carpet, leather and decorative aluminium that's going to be a long way from practical if you plan on regularly loading in muddy dogs and children. Still, we think it's unlikely that many potential buyers will mind that very much. Quite the contrary, in fact. As ever with Audi, it's the at-the-wheel experience that'll probably really sell you this car. The Ingolstadt brand isn't as far ahead of its rivals as it used to be in this regard, but this remains the defining cabin in its class, with surprising headroom, a wraparound design and a premium feeling of space and safety. An almost unbroken line of air vents stretched from one side of the fascia to the other, sitting above a 3D trim inlay panel that can be finished in wood or, as here, in brushed aluminium. Uh, to your left, the centre console area has been visually separated away to give this upper area of the dash more of a floating feel. And small details add to the feeling of quality, uh, like the gear lever that also acts as a hand rest for the infotainment system's controller. The touch switches for the three-zone climate control and the way that temperature displays have been incorporated into the ventilation system's rotary dials. In fact, wherever you look, touch or feel, there are treats. The buttons click nicely, uh, the column stalks feel good and the low-rent plastics you'd find further down in most premium rivals are noticeable by their absence. Only storage space could be better. The glove box is small and not lockable as standard, while the door bins are slim and the console box between the seats is rather shallow. We like the seats, though, anatomically shaped with head restraints that can be optionally specified to move not only for height but also for distance from the head. Uh, these seats position you perfectly in front of the magnesium-framed, leather-stitched, uh, three-spoke multifunction steering wheel through which, in standard models, you'd view two conventional analogue dials separated by the usual information screen. Here, though, as you can see, we've got something much nicer than that. The optional virtual cockpit replaces the entire instrument binnacle with a 12.3-inch LCD colour monitor and has a layout that's fully digital and customizable with smart 3D graphics and highly detailed effects. Now, it can be viewed in one of the two ways. The classic display shows you a prominent speedometer, rev counter and gear indicator. Alternatively, um, the... Progressive display reduces the size of those items and instead brings functions like the navigation map or your media settings to the fore. We're going to see many more systems of this kind in future years, but this one really sets the standard they must all try to reach when it comes to clarity and ease of use. And we think you've got to have it with this car. Anything this setup can't tell you will almost certainly be covered by the slimline MMI infotainment display that dominates the top of this dashboard. It's 7 inches in size on standard models or 8.3 inches if you opt for the top MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch system we're trying here with its crisp 3D maps and responsive NVIDIA graphics. Um, a little disappointing me, it doesn't rise out of the fascia in the way the screen does on a cheaper Audi A3, but in compensation, the thin tablet-style display is now touch-sensitive with neat pinch-and-swipe functionality, and it comes presented in a classy silver-coloured magnesium frame. If you don't want to cover the thing with sticky fingerprints, there's voice activation, uh, steering wheel buttons, and of course, the usual chrome-edged rotary controller in front of the gear stick, which, with this more expensive package, comes with a surface on which commands can be traced by your fingertips. Even if you go for the standard MMI setup, though, you'll get the useful Audi smartphone interface with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone connectivity, uh, which allows uh, everything you access on your handset to be duplicated onto the dashboard screen. Add in the optional Audi Connect system and you'll be able to use a whole raft of 4G online Wi-Fi options powered by a super fast LTE module that'll give you download speeds of up to 100 megabits per second. Now well, time to take a seat in the rear. Now I was talking earlier about ruggedness. You certainly get a rugged feel if you drive this car on a muddy farm track and then stop on the light by the roadside. And that's because the lower parts of the door quickly collect mud from the tyres. And if you're not careful, the accumulated muck will be swiped across your legs every time you get in and out. 
Once inside, you ought, in theory, to quickly notice the benefit of the extra 12 millimeters of wheelbase length this Mark II model A4 all-road enjoys over its predecessor. Audi says there's 23 millimeters more legroom back here than there was before, but to be frank, it doesn't feel that much bigger. Partly this is because of the low roof line, though that's less of a limiting factor for headroom than we thought it might be. More of an issue is this slightly prominent centre transmission tunnel. Still, three adults are very rarely carried at the back of this kind of car, and two will be as comfortable as it's possible to be in a compact executive estate model of this sort. At first glance, this A4 all-road model seems to occupy a very slim market niche indeed. To be attracted to one, you have to want something more than merely an ordinary four-wheel drive equipped compact executive estate and something less than a fully-fledged mid-sized SUV. And you also have to have a fairly healthy purchasing budget, given that A4 all-road pricing sits mainly in the thirty-eight to £43,000 bracket. You'll need some perspective on that. Well, for one of these, you'll pay only around two or three hundred pounds more than will be required for a comparably engine quattro version of the standard A4 Avant, which sounds quite reasonable until you also realize that for only around 800 to a thousand pounds more, you could also have Audi's desirable Q5 SUV, which uses much of the same engineering. But then the whole point of buying this car is to avoid the unnecessariness of an SUV. So let's not lose sight of that. Now, as you might expect, all road buyers are restricted to the choicier engines from the A4 Avant lineup, which is why they're also restricted to automatic transmission. Now, an eight speed Tiptronic box is needed to cope with the prodigious torque of the top 272 PS 3 litre TDI diesel variant we're trying here. But elsewhere in the lineup, buyers get the more familiar seven speed S Tronic auto setup. Now, the vast majority of customers in our market choose the most affordable variant in the range, the 190 PS 4 cylinder the 2-litre TDI diesel model. You'll only need around £1,800 more, though, to get your A4 all-road with a six-cylinder diesel engine, a torquier 218 PS 3-litre TDI diesel derivative that's almost as economical. Uh, the sole petrol variant gets Audi's redesigned 252 PS 2-litre TFSI unit, and it's also only fractionally more expensive than the volume diesel, but that will be a rare sight on our roads. So, what else is there in the market that directly competes with this model? Well, there are four-wheel drive versions of the BMW 3 Series Touring and the Mercedes C-Class Estate in the £35,000 to £40,000 bracket, but they're not really off-road orientated. Of course, you can get estate models in this segment that are cars like Volvo's V60 Cross Country and Volkswagen's Passat Alltrack spring to mind, models that would save you two or £3,000 over this Audi. But they don't offer quite the same premium proposition and you can't get them with six cylinder power. Uh, the same also applies to even cheaper capable four wheel drive estates like Subaru's Forester or Skoda's Octavia Scout. Now, yes, there is an eight to ten thousand pound saving to be made by opting for something like that. But the final product just doesn't have the same kind of quality and driveway kudos that a typical A4 all road bar will be looking for. So, is there anything that does? Uh, well, we think Volvo's V90 cross-country model would be a good option if you could stretch your budget to around £40,000, but it is clunkier to drive and slightly pricier to run. Uh, if running costs are everything, then the clever diesel-electric Peugeot 508 RX-H estate might appeal, and that's priced very similarly to this Audi. Otherwise, you're looking at similarly priced premium badge mid-sized SUVs like Range Rover's Evoque, BMW's X3 and the Mercedes GLC. And we said we weren't going to get into that kind of comparison. If having considered all that, you conclude that it is an A4 all-road that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Audi has been with a standard spec. So let's see, uh, and let's start with the things that set this all-road variant apart from a standard A4 event. So apart from the Quattro setup and the auto gearbox, a lot of it is down to aesthetic stuff, of course. Uh, for example, the off-road aluminium package that sees that metal used for the roof rails, uh, the roof frame, the window capping strip and the door handles. 
Uh, there's a high gloss exterior package too. Plus a redesigned front grille, uh, bespoke front and rear bumpers, wider aluminium side sills and extended wheel arches that showcase the higher ride height while hinting at the underbody protection. Otherwise, it's much as you would get in a normal mid-spec A4 Avant Quattro, which means that, as with all A4s, you get the brand's Drive Select Vehicle Dynamic System that allows you to tweak the throttle, the steering and the gear shift timers to suit the way you want to drive. In an all-road variant, though, Drive Select has an additional off-road mode that adjusts the engine, uh, the transmission, the steering and all the car's electronic systems for driving off paved surfaces. Other key features include a power-operated tailgate that works with an electrically retracting load area cover, 17-inch uh, alloy wheels, xenon headlights with LED daytime running lights, uh, auto headlamps and wipers, rear parking sensors, an alarm and a chromed exhaust. And thankfully, a spare wheels provided too, rather than one of those irritating tyre repair kits. Inside, there's three-zone climate control, a keyless go push-button starter, cruise control with a speed limiter, an auto-dimming rear-view mirror, and plenty of media connectivity. Now, this comes courtesy of the standard MMI infotainment setup that allows you to access features from your smartphone via the 7-inch fascia colour touchscreen using the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto systems. Uh, you also get MMI dashboard screen access to your handset's third-party apps too, uh, things like Pandora, Spotify and WhatsApp, as well as things like reminders or messaging functions. And as you'd expect from this class of car, the infotainment package integrates Bluetooth phone connectivity and an eight-speaker DAB stereo system. That's all controllable either via the MMI controller, by voice through buttons on the multifunction leather stitch steering wheel, or via that seven-inch color touchscreen. Do you want to go further? Well, for a model for model premium of around £3,000, you can get your A4 All-Road in upgraded sport trim. Now, that extra cash gets you larger 18-inch wheels, rear privacy glass, front acoustic glazing, uh, LED headlights and LED tail lamps with dynamic indicators that put on a sweeping light show every time you flick them on. Inside, extra features include special twin leather upholstery, front sport seats, uh, a 10-speaker Audi sound system, satellite navigation and a three-month subscription for the Audi Connect connectivity system. Uh, it's a feature that, in our view, really completes the MMI infotainment setup's functionality. Audi Connect is something we really need to tell you a bit more about. Underlining as it does, Audi's determination to create in this car class-leading levels of media connectivity. It gives you an LTE data transmission module that establishes high-speed 4G Internet 3 access and creates a Wi-Fi hotspot in this A4. It also allows you to navigate with images from Google Earth, uh, access the Google Points of Interest search function with voice control and use a web radio setup with stations from all around the world. Uh, through the Connect system, you can also access special in-car versions of your Facebook and Twitter pages. And it's also possible to read, write and send text messages and emails. Uh, the included online media streaming package uh, gives you access to millions of music tracks. And there's also a clever Audi online traffic information system that uses live traffic information to reroute you around jams. Plus, the setup can also deliver parking information, uh, displaying details on parking lots and parking garages, pretty much anywhere you're likely to go. So truly, this is motoring in the 21st century. If you don't want to stretch to a sport-trimmed A4 all-road, but you like the sound of that Audi Connect setup, then you'll probably be tempted to take up the optional technology pack that we're trying here. Here you get a longer three-year subscription to the Audi Connect service. Uh, otherwise, the pack's most important inclusion is the sophisticated MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch system with its larger 8.3-inch color touchscreen, its crisp 3D map display, 10-gigabyte music hard drive, DVD player, and responsive in-video graphics. Further technology pack inclusions run to a touch-sensitive surface for the MMI controller so you can uh, trace commands with your fingertips. Uh, the Audi phone box system that wirelessly charges your smartphone and improves its reception quality via the roof antenna. And a larger, smarter 7-inch colour display for the instrument binnacle that you can view through a more sophisticated multifunction steering wheel. 
Another reason why we think you may well want that technology pack is that you have to have it if you also be able to pay extra for what we think are the two most desirable optional features that you can get on this car. Now first, there's the optional 12.3-inch virtual cockpit TFT colour instrument display we've been trying here. And this is provided to completely replace the instrument binnacle's conventional dials. It's totally configurable, very futuristic, and it probably represents one of this model's biggest showroom talking points. Out on the road, though, well, after dark at least, you might find yourself uh, more inclined to brief your passengers on the cleverness of Audi's cutting-edge Matrix LED headlamps. Now, these incorporate sensors and an inbuilt camera that detects other road users as well as ambient light in built-up areas. Now, then, uh, react by dipping individual LEDs to prevent dazzle while still fully illuminating the remainder of the road. Uh, they even draw from the vehicle's navigation data to anticipate corners, adjusting the LEDs as you negotiate the bend. <laughs> it's brilliant. Both the virtual cockpit and the matrix lights can be ordered separately or as part of a light and vision pack. It also throws in uh, extended colour LED interior lighting. Alternatively, there's a vision pack which bundles the virtual cockpit feature up with a head-up display and high beam assist headlamps that dip themselves in the face of oncoming traffic at night. So that brings me on to the driving stuff. Now we'd want to look at the all-road suspension with damping control package which allows you to tweak ride quality via the various modes of the drive select vehicle dynamic system to suit the way you want to drive. Uh, there's also a dynamic steering option that varies the steering ratio based on your speed and the drive select mode you've chosen. But in our experience, it doesn't really succeed in offering the kind of feel and feedback that you'd really want. Uh, if we were towing regularly, as many A4 all-road owners will be, uh, we'd want the trailer pack. Now, this gives you an electrically evolving tow bar and a bit of help in using it, courtesy of a clever trailer assist system. Now, using sensors, cameras and onboard screens, this setup automatically turns the steering wheel as you reverse when hitched up, directing your trailer on a desired course that you can set using the MMI system's rotary push-button controller. What else? Um, well, we'd be tempted by this model's lovely, huge panoramic glass roof and by the parking assistance pack with its 360-degree camera system and parking assist setup that searches for spaces and then steers you into them. We'd also definitely want to look at the 19-speaker, 755-watt Bang & Olufsen sound system with its concert hall quality 3D sound. And that's a feature that can also be ordered as part of a comfort and sound pack that additionally gives you electric seats and a keyless entry system. Other key options include a rear view camera, a heated steering wheel, heated seats in the front and rear, roll up blinds for the rear side windows and a heated windscreen. If you're pushing the boat out a little further, you might want to look at the Audi Entertainment Mobile, a package that gives you a couple of 10.1 inch colour screens along with headphones for rear seat passengers. There's an optional TV tuner too. In terms of aesthetics of your A4 all-road, if budget allows, well, you can really go to town. Uh, you can specify interior inlays in silver, piano black or veneered oak or walnut wood finishes. Plus, the seats can be trimmed in twin leather or Milano leather. Or on sport models, there's a leather Alcantara combination. Uh, they can be power operated at the front too. We'd also like the variable head restraints that tilt in and out as well as up and down. And this car's extended interior upholstery pack would be nice with leatherette trimming for the uh, lower centre console, the door armrests and the door pulls. You might also want the optional sportier looking flat bottom three spoke steering wheel. Outside there's a choice of alloy wheel designs and the rims vary in size from 17 to 19 inches. If practical touches are a greater priority, then you'll want to protect the boot area with the variable foldable trunk mat and organise boot items via a rail system that comes with a load securing kit. Uh, power folding mirrors and headlamp washers could be of interest. Uh, there's also an optional hands-free tailgate opening system. Uh, you simply wave your foot beneath the bumper if you approach the car laden down with bags. And as you'd expect, there's also the option of the usual roof bars for luggage boxes, skis, snowboards and bikes. 
On to safety. Now, even the most basically specified A4 all-road will come very well provided for indeed in this respect, with a standard fit highlight on all models being a collision avoidance system that Audi calls Precent City. Now, this is one of those setups that constantly scans the road ahead in search of potential accident hazards. If it detects one, uh, then you'll be warned. If you don't respond, or perhaps you aren't able to, then the system will automatically brake the car, and it should be able to avoid a collision at speeds of under 90 miles an hour. Now, if you're going faster than that, the Precent City system will reduce your speed to soften the impending impact. Now, if you do hit something and panic, then a standard multi-collision brake assist system will automatically to take over the braking duties to avoid the possibility of skidding and further collisions. As for more common standard safety features, well, all versions of this car also get Isofix child seat fastenings, anti-whiplash head restraints and a tyre pressure loss indicator, plus twin front side and curtain airbags with rear side bags and extra cost option. In addition, as expected in this segment, there's a complete roster of electronic acronyms, including the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control. There's also a rest recommendation feature that monitors your driving for drowsiness and alerts you, if necessary, to stop for a restorative coffee. Uh, on uphill junctions, you'll be glad of a hill hold system that stops you from drifting backwards. It's always possible to go further, though, and should you want extra peace of mind, your Audi centre salesperson will doubtless point you towards the choicest elements of the safety technology that's uh, been developed for this car, all of which requires you to have previously specified that technology pack I mentioned earlier. Now, we'll start with the Parking Assistance Pack Advanced Package that includes five key features. A cross-traffic assist rear feature alerts you to oncoming cars if you're reversing out of a space. And an exit warning system monitors the rear and side of your A4 as you get out of it, alerting you if vehicles or cyclists are approaching from behind. On the move, Audi Side Assist works as a blind spot monitor, warning you if you're dangerously about to pull out to overtake in the path of another vehicle. Plus, there are Audi Presense Basic and Presense Rear features that, in the event of inevitable front or rear impact, optimally prepare the car to best survive it. The other, even more significant combined safety feature option you'll be offered with this car is called the Driver Assistance Pack Tour Package. Now, this gives you seven key extra electronic safety items that really could make the difference between a near miss and a really bad day. So, let me run through them for you. Uh, we'll start with a system the English that brand calls Presense Front. Now, remember that standard Presense City setup I was telling you about, that at low speeds scans the road ahead for collisions and can automatically brake to avoid them. Well, wouldn't it be good if that setup operated at higher speeds too? Well, with Presense Front, it does. Even cleverer is what we'd see as probably the most sophisticated driver assistance pack tour feature. Now, this is something Audi calls adaptive cruise control with stop and go and traffic jam assist. Now, this system is there to automatically keep your A4 a set distance behind the car in front on the highway, uh, warning you if you're too close to another vehicle and also able to automatically stop you and then start you off again if you come across a tailback. Uh, the traffic jam assist bit also frees you up in slow to medium speed queues, allowing the car to automatically brake, accelerate and steer for you at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour. Yes, really. I haven't finished yet either. An equally clever predictive efficiency assist system works with this setup, regulating your Audi's speed for maximum efficiency and also offering driving tips that could create fuel savings of up to 10%. If you think that's neat, well, then check out the fourth driver assistance pack tour feature. It's called Turn Assist. Now, say you're turning out of a junction and you haven't seen an oncoming car or bike. Turn Assist will automatically apply the brakes, preventing the accident. If only every car had that feature. Other more familiar inclusions in the pack run to traffic sign recognition that can picture road signs and display them on the dash. Audi Active Lane Assist, that's there to gently steer you back into your lane if you inadvertently drift out of it. And a so-called Collision Avoidance Assistant that tweaks the steering to keep the car stable in emergency manoeuvres. It's all very reassuring.
We've seen some big changes with this second generation A4 all-road when it comes to questions of efficiency. Ali reckons that this Mark II model is up to 90 kilos lighter and 13% greener than its predecessor, despite being 12% more powerful. Now these are significant stats with the figures aided primarily by two things. First and most significantly, there's the far-reaching weight savings made to the standard fifth generation A4 Avant that this variant is based on. And secondly, there's the effect of this second generation A4 all-road model's key technological enhancement, Quattro with Ultra technology. We'll start with the weight saving issue first, something the English stat engineers have brought about by painstaking attention to detail and wider use of aluminium. The rear hatch, for example, is now fashioned from that stiff, light metal. As for the new on-demand Quattro system, well, it's four kilos lighter than the old permanent setup, which obviously helps. And the fact that it's both predictive and proactive should mean that your A4 all-road will be less likely to stay four-wheel driven in circumstances where that extra traction is actually unnecessary. So let's get to the figures. Uh, the extra 70 kilos of weight that this all-road body style must carry over its standard Avant Quattro counterpart means that inevitably this model will be a little thirstier and dirtier than that one. But there's surprisingly little in it. If you take the 2-litre TFSI petrol A4 all-road model as an example, that variant is claimed by Audi to be able to achieve 44.1 mpg on the combined cycle and 147 grams per kilometre of CO2. At the time of this car's launch, that made it only 2.2 mpg thirstier and 8 grams per kilometre of CO2 dirtier than an ordinary A4 Avant 2-litre TFSI Quattro S-Tronic. Most buyers, though, are going to want a diesel. Now, as usual, your exact returns are going to vary with the wheel rim size you select. But if you think in terms of the volume 2-litre TDI diesel Quattro derivative, uh, returning around 57 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and around 130 grams per kilometre of CO2, you're going to be in the right ballpark. To give you some perspective on those figures, a directly comparable rival Volvo V60 D4 all-wheel drive cross-country model manages 49.6 mpg on the combined cycle and 149 grams per kilometer. So, quite a difference. What about if you want a pokier diesel though? Well, with the 218 PS version of the A4 all-road 3.0-litre V6 TDI Quattro, you'll be looking at around 55 to 58 mpg on the combined cycle and around 135 to 140 grams per kilometre depending on wheel size. While if you go for the top 272 PS 3.0-litre V6 TDI Quattro, you'll be looking at around 53 to 55 mpg on the combined cycle and around 137 to 143 grams per kilometre of CO2 to, again, depending on wheel size. Again, to give you some perspective on those figures, they're very comparable to those of a directly equivalent Volvo V90 D5 all-wheel drive cross-country model, but that Swedish rival delivers much less pulling power and acceleration than you'd get from a top 3-litre V6 TDI A4 all-road. Of course, this Audi's impressive showing isn't solely down to reduced weight and its redeveloped Quattro system. Other important factors include a more slippery shape and an engine stop-start system that cuts in as you coast to a halt rather than waiting until you get to a complete stop. Now this means that in traffic the engine is off more often than it would otherwise be. The 2-litre TDI variant also gets a controllable cool air inlet, a frame installed behind the radiator grille housing two blinds that close at low speeds and open at higher ones to improve air resistance. Magazine tests have pointed out that across the board the figures we've quoted can be difficult to achieve in real world motoring, but that's not an issue, it's exclusive to Audi. Much will depend on the driver, hence the Ingolstadt brand's efforts with this car to help the person at the wheel to do more when it comes to efficiency. As usual with the company's models, there's an efficiency setting on the Drive Select Vehicle Dynamics System, which tweaks the air conditioning, uh, the gear shift timings and the throttle response for maximum frugality. Going further than that requires use of the optional predictive efficiency assist setup that Audi says could potentially improve your fuel economy by as much as 10%. It works with navigation data and the adaptive cruise control system that comes as part of the extra cost driver assistance pack tour package. 
How? Well, by analysing any given route once set to decide how the journey could be undertaken more efficiently. In doing this, the speed limits, the traffic signs, the bends and roundabouts that you'll be encountering along the way are all taken into account. The setup then offers driving tips that'll help you achieve better running cost returns. Uh, perhaps, for example, a junction is out of your sight around the next bend and you could take your foot off the accelerator a little earlier. Get onto the motorway and with the adaptive cruise control system activated, predictive efficiency assist will automatically make all the frugal driving adjustments for you. If it knows you're going to be travelling for a few junctions, it'll even disengage the engine at cruising speeds for greater efficiency and then re-engage it immediately and almost seamlessly when you either accelerate or brake. What else? Uh, well, one small irritation on the diesel versions of this car is that in order to keep weight down, Audi only fits quite a small 12-litre tank for the AdBlue additive that works with the TDR unit's diesel particulate filter and selective catalytic reduction system to remove particles and nitrogen oxides from the exhaust emissions. Now, that will mean quite frequent visits uh, to get the AdBlue topped up when your car's in for service. A bigger tank that's 24 litres in size is an option that might well be worth paying extra for. Talking of maintenance, uh, well, costs here can be kept down if you go for one of the prepaid servicing plans that you'll be offered at initial purchase. In fact, this car can even book its own service appointments via an Audi Connect safety and service system. As well as providing emergency calling and online roadside assistance, this feature can, at the appropriate time, send a service request direct to your local dealer. So, on to the warranty. All cars in this class get three years of cover, but whereas BMW and Mercedes don't limit your mileage in that period, Audi rather meanly restricts you to 60,000 miles. Optional extra cost packages can extend that cover to either four or five years. As for insurance groupings, well, they'll be very comparable to those of the other premium brands in this segment. Uh, the 2-litre TFSI petrol variant attracts the rating of Group 33E. Diesel drivers, meanwhile, will be looking at Group 27E for the 2-litre TDI 190 PS model, Group 2080 for the 3-litre V6 TDI 218 PS variant, and Group 39E for the 3-litre V6 TDI 272 PS model that we're trying here. So we'll finish by covering residual values, which, as usual with this Ingolstadt brand, are predicted to be very strong, reflective of the unsurpassed build quality on offer here. Independent experts Cat Monitor reckon that over the usual three-year, 60,000-mile period, a 2-litre TDI 190 PS diesel A4 all-road will cling on to around 42% of its original asking price. Now, in comparison, comparably engined four-wheel drive estate versions of the BMW 3 Series Touring and the Mercedes C-Class manage 32% and 34% respectively. In theory, this A4 all-road is little more than a jacked-up A4 Avant Quattro. In practice, though, it feels so much more than that. Why? Well, the cosmetic upgrades certainly play their part, and on the move, the improved ride quality further helps to give this model its own more unique feel. It all means that if you were going to buy a plusher A4 Avant anyway, and your dealer pointed out that for very little more you could have one of these, well, we think you'd find that proposition hard to resist. But does the case for this car add up from other perspectives? Well, perhaps. Uh, you might reasonably expect it to be significantly cheaper than a proper purpose-built premium-badged mid-sized SUV, in which case you're going to be disappointed because it isn't. It's less surprising to find this model's upscale pricing being pitched well above the levels of 4x4 estate segment rivals from Volkswagen, Volvo and Subaru. At least you can justify that with the higher residual values. As for the things that set this model apart from its predecessor, well, the new on-demand Quattro with Ultra Technology system makes much more sense than the old permanent setup. Uh, plus, the improved media connectivity represents a big step forward. And we think buyers will really like cabin features like the futuristic virtual cockpit instrument display. In summary, this second-generation A4 all-road is much more of a model in its own right than its predecessor ever was. If you want the occasional benefits of better ground clearance and off-road traction without the usual clunky dynamic downsides, 
if you can do without the image, the expense and bulk of a fully-fledged SUV. And if, in summary, you want to make a sensible lifestyle statement, then here's a solution that's very thorough, very sophisticated and very Audi.